an ounce of loyalty is worth a pound of cleverness. Ebert Hubbard used that phrase in his quote, if put to the pinch, an ounce of loyalty is worth a pound of cleverness, meaning when everybody's going out the door, the person that's loyal will probably get to stay. Friend, but do you realize loyalty not only matters to those who employ others, but to our family, friends, and most of all, to our God. Please stay as we consider and explore what the Bible has to tell us about loyalty. Good morning, folks. I'm Troy Wilson. I hope this has been a great week for you. With all that's going on in our country, we can still be thankful that we can take the next 10 minutes and worship and renew our spirits together. Amen. Glad to have you here. Friend, when I think about loyalty, my mind immediately goes to a Siamese cat we once had. His name was Chi-Chi. Now, I didn't name him. Some of my family did. Don't, don't remember who. I don't really remember how we came about getting Chi-Chi, but I do remember I was totally against it. One reason, I am allergic to cats. However, as most of you know, there must be some give and take within the family structure. Amen. You been there? So the compromise was this. We could keep Chi-Chi, but keep him away from me. Folks, cats do not care about agreements, allergies, or compromises. What they do care about is seeking out those who don't want them in the first place, then clinging to that person like a newborn calf to a mama cow. Thus was the case with Chi-Chi. Often, I would fall asleep in my recliner and wake up teary-eyed and sneezing because Chi-Chi had decided to quietly climb up and fall asleep on my lap. Yes, I would be unkind and I would yell for Chi-Chi to get away from me. But that made Chi-Chi more determined to be wherever I was in the house, no matter the kitchen, the bathroom, the bedroom. I'd feel something rubbing on my leg, look down, and there's Chi-Chi staring up at me. I don't really know if one would say Chi-Chi was loyal or persistent. Maybe some of both, but I didn't want either. There were times when my allergies had gotten so bad, I would just pick up Chi-Chi and put him outside on the porch. When doing so, I would often say things like, why don't you just run away or go live with somebody that don't have allergies? Now, one might think that was mean, but if you suffer from allergies, you may be quicker to forgive me than most. Each time I put Chi-Chi out on the porch, he would just wait there for however long until somebody opened the door and let him back in. That was until one day... I was particularly verbally abusive while putting Chi-Chi outside, saying to him, please go away and never come back. Now listen to this. When I finally did open the door, expecting to encounter Chi-Chi squeezing his way back inside, there was no Chi-Chi. I looked outside, then all around the house, no Chi-Chi. Thinking he had just wandered off and would be back soon, I went back inside and said nothing to my family. Night came and still no Chi-Chi. To make matters worse, my wife and the kids were now asking, where is Chi-Chi? Has anybody seen Chi-Chi? Of course, I tried to minimize things by saying he's just off doing what cats do, prowling the neighborhood, looking for a girlfriend or something to eat. Well, my friend... Three days passed and still no Chi-Chi. It was on the afternoon of the third day that I asked my wife if she would like to walk with me around the block to see if we could locate Chi-Chi. Now, this is a part which really got to me. Just a short distance down the street and on the same side as our house lived the Bakers, Mr. and Mrs. Baker, a very nice retired couple which often spent evenings just sitting out on their porch. We would walk by and pass the pleasures of the day as we passed, and this day was no different, with the exception of on Mr. Baker's lap sat Chi-Chi. We stopped walking at which time I said to Mr. Baker, I see you found you a cat. Actually, I thought he probably knew Chi-Chi was our cat until he smiled and then replied, Yes, he just wandered up here a couple of days ago, and we just seemed to take to one another right off. My wife was about to speak, but I gave her that slight head shake married couples give not to say anything. Now, this is confession time. I didn't realize I wanted Chi-Chi until he was gone. 
More than that, the look he gave me when he lifted his head up from Mr. Baker's lap, which was one that telegraphed, well, I found me a good home where somebody loves me and there's nothing you can do about it. Chi-Chi then puts his head back down and begins nudging Mr. Baker's hand for him to scratch him, which he did. It was while Mr. Baker was scratching my cat's head that I realized this empty feeling I was beginning to experience was all on me. And I was just going to have to live with it. Friend, I told you this true story to illustrate loyalty is a two-way street. Yes, I fed Chi-Chi. Yes, I gave him a home. Yes, I took him to the vet. But none of these things on my part could be considered loyalty. Loyalty in the sense of being a strong support or caring for someone or something. But I had failed to demonstrate that to Chi-Chi. And the hard lesson I learned was providing the essentials for survival is not an affectionate or caring attitude. It is not loyalty. We are quickly coming to the end of today's message, but I want to leave you with this short passage of Scripture, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Read it with, Know therefore that thy God he is God. He is the faithful God, which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Did we get that, folks? Which keep it covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments. God is also telling us loyalty is a two-way street. Yes, God will always love us no matter what, but his covenant, his loyalty is not to be taken for granted. Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 10, the children of Israel had broken covenant or loyalty to God by worshiping idols, other gods. However, we see in verse 11, God also breaks covenant and withdraws his loyalty from them. He withdrew his covenant to them of them reaching the promised land. Instead, he raised up a new generation which was loyal to him. So what does this mean? It means our Father in heaven will still love us unconditionally no matter what. However, he owes no allegiance or a rich harvest to a disobedient, disloyal child. Neighbor, I encourage you above all things to keep a loyal relationship with Jesus Christ and follow his commandment. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your loyalty and faithfulness to us. It is because of you and the love you have for us that you sent your son to die for our sins. We ask you, dear God, if there's one today whose loyalty has wavered from you, may they repent and get back to obeying your ways and your commandments and form a relationship with your son. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen.